this shutdown, it's not just about Democrats versus Republicans. I've seen the phrase civil war. This is a civil war brewing within the Republican Party, this battle between lawmakers who prefer to pick their battles and these Tea Party politicians with this take no prisoners attitude. So let's talk both sides here. We're joined now by a pair of conservatives. Emily Miller is senior editor of uh, opinion for the Washington Times and author of uh, the new book, Emily Gets Her Gun. And Ben Stein, economist, author, former speech writer for President Richard Nixon. So great to see both of you here. Um, ben Stein, let me, let me begin with you here. As a, as a conservative, uh, you know, working in the Nixon White House, yet you say that there is no point to what the Republicans are doing right now. Why? Well, because we Republicans started out the idea of universal health care. We Republicans in 1973 sent a message to Congress asking for universal health care. was killed by Edward Kennedy for no good reason. It's a perfectly good idea. Uh, there are glitches in the implementation. Uh, let's get them fixed. Or if the plan is so bad that it's going to bring down the whole government and the whole country, let's put it into effect and let it ruin the Democratic Party for generations. <laughs> but let's not shut down the government. The government does lots of vital functions. The government is full of perfectly good, hardworking, decent people. Let's not shut down the government. Remember that the law was passed. It was approved by the Supreme Court. Uh, I don't agree with the law at all, but let's let's have it go into law the way the Constitution says. And if it's going to be a bad thing, let it be good for the Republican Party. Emily Miller, you disagree. Well, I agree with him that the law is terrible, but um, yeah. you know this is this is where you have the divide: is that the conservative, more Tea Party Republicans, this is largely started by Senator Ted Cruz of Texas, say we have very little leverage here. We control one third, one half of one third of the government, and we don't want to see Obamacare get implemented, which is happening today. So let's do what we can, and what we can do is stop the spending. So let's stop the spending, and we have some leverage to negotiate. Unfortunately, Obama says well, I'm not negotiating, so. The House Republicans keep sending over spending bills with some modifications to Obamacare, whether it's taking out the tax or putting it off for a year, and it keeps getting rejected, or the White House issues a veto threat. So everything went into effect today. The question is, is what can the Republicans sort of salvage out of this? Well, in terms of salvaging here, right, so we have the shutdown, and who knows how long this will last. We know the latest reporting is that the House Republicans are proposing maybe this you know, piecemeal bills to, to, to fund parts of the government. But I talked to, I want to play some sound, because I talked to a, a moderate Republican. I talked to former uh, presidential candidate John Huntsman uh, last hour, and I asked him not about this particular fight but about that fight this upcoming fight October 17th and the possibility of the government running out of its 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 money to pay its bills this is what he told me about that you know you think the government shutdown is a big deal and we're gonna hurt every day that this goes on economically the govern the the debt ceiling is a thermonuclear explosion compared to a hand grenade wow. that's when we wake up October 17th we find the Treasury has 30 billion dollars we then have a, a interest payment due of 29 billion dollars shortly thereafter and debt roll over the next month and what is Emily, do you think this small faction that, that the president continues to refer to, um, you know, the, this group of Ted Cruz and company, do you think that they will lead another fight come uh, debt sailing well, time? Well, to clarify, small small faction is a majority of the House of Representatives. That's it's correct. More than a majority of 435 members of the House, and it's all of the Senate Republicans. So it's not a small faction; it's the majority of Republicans' Congress. And yeah, I mean, this is going to be a this spending this this fight right now is not about spending. It's just what's holding it up is Obamacare. But this is about the American people saying mostly the big picture. American people are saying we're not being listened to. We've elected you to cut spending, to bring down the deficit, to stop this Obamacare and you're not doing anything and the Republicans here are trying to say we're listening we're doing what we can with the limited power and control that we have over this government to do those things Ben what do you think you you've been around the block I think we've got to look look this is a flight from responsibility on the part of the Republican Party which is extremely embarrassing to a person who's been a Republican probably for longer than both of your lives put together <laughs> it, it is not allowed to blow up the government in order to change a law if we want to change the law let's try to get Republicans elected in the next election cycle and get the law revised but let's not bring down the house on top of us like Samson pulling down the pillars this is just nuts I mean it's just nuts to endanger the national defense economic endanger the economic security of older Americans and and what about the federal workers why on earth should the federal workers be suffering they're hard-working men and women they're not just parasites they're hard-working men and women well, why the are they being tortured over this. 
every time we have one of these shutdowns, and obviously we haven't had one in 17 years, they always go back and completely fund everything. So everybody gets paid in full. Nobody loses money in the end. I mean, it's well, then why not? Then why do it in the first place? Because it's all the control they have to try to stop or avert Obamacare from hitting today. It's all they can do. Well, and all the control I, a child in a playground has is to throw sand in the other child's face. I mean, this this, this is just not responsible behavior. This is not the Republican Party of Abraham Lincoln or Dwight ben, Eisenhower. Do you think for a minute that Dwight Eisenhower would have approved of this? Well, Ben, I don't know what Dwight Eisenhower would do, but I will say the Republicans have sent over five bills to the Senate, and they're the ones who've rejected them. Five. And the president has but issued veto threats for all of them. But they're bills that are nonsense. I mean, they're they're not. They're they're bills one of them is very nonsense. reasonable they're to say let's not let's let's just put off the medical device tax. That's completely reasonable. That is something that could have been a negotiated what? middle ground there. And again, I mean, Trump, this morning, Why? the House sent over a bill well, that said Democrats, let's go to conference and negotiate. And then the the, the, Senate, the bills the Senate, aren't even passed. It's Emily, just, I respect you very much, and I love the Washington Times a lot. <laughs> but with the greatest respect, the bills aren't even passed and approved by the Supreme Court. It's done. Garnish. No, it's I'm just done. talking about these spending bills. These spending bills with but this it's modification. But it's already done. All right. It's already done. I hear both of you. I am so glad we are having this exchange because I think a lot of Americans represent what Emily thinks and Ben Stein what you think. Hopefully, the, the, all the money comes back, Emily, as you pointed out, what happened 17 years ago. But really, I think the big question, a lot of people agree with me, is not what happens right this very moment, what happens in 16 days from now, because that could be, to quote John Huntsman, uh, a thermonuclear explosion when it comes to the economy. And he could be our next president. Emily Miller and Ben Stein, thank you both very much. I appreciate both of your perspectives.